So our first tip today is hiding the background. Let's say that you have this background and you want to use uh, this photo of uh, Deadpool. So if you look uh, at the composition, of course, uh, you can add a mask and add uh, his uh, legs into the grass. That's really simple. If you look in the distance, you'll see that uh, there are too many details and our Deadpool, uh, it's visible, of course, but it can be even better. So um, I added uh, just uh, this, uh, let's say, fog or gradient. And now uh, our subject is more in the focus. So let me explain you how to create this. Uh, just create a new layer, then uh, take the brush tool and uh, right click and uh, select the soft brush. And then be sure that the flow is around 10, 12%. And now hold Alt. And uh, if you are holding Alt, you'll see on the screen this uh, eyedropper tool. Uh, that means that if you click uh, anywhere on the screen, it will uh, grab or pick that color that's uh, uh, underneath that uh, eyedropper. So now uh, if you click, let's say here, you'll get that uh, orange uh, somehow color. And now if I um, increase the size of the brush and I'm starting to click around, so I'm just clicking, not dragging, uh, you'll add that color uh, on the screen and then uh, pick another color, let's say this one from the sky and continue to do the same thing on that uh, area and then uh, change the color hold alt and uh, grab a color and uh, so on and now uh, if you consider that it's uh, too much you can take the eraser tool and then you can uh, start to erase some parts and uh, uh, you can have your own result so that's a really nice way to cover uh, the far part of your background to have your subject more in the focus. All right, so this is the fourth example. Uh, I have another example for you. So um, we have uh, this uh, water or ocean, and then uh, on top I have placed this sky and I have added a mask. And now uh, if you look, we have two different uh, photos that, uh, do not, that do not match uh, or uh, mix that well together. So I did the same thing, I added some small fog and on top I added this statue and now uh, everything looks great. You can concentrate on the statue, uh, not on the background because otherwise without that uh, fog or uh, I don't know, gradient, um, your eyes will be mislead and you can, you know, uh, look at other not that important parts of our background. So as the name says, uh, smart objects are really important. So this Photoshop function, it's a great improvement uh, from the old versions. So um, when you work with a lot of uh, layers, it's important to have them as smart objects because otherwise they will lose quality if you uh, make them smaller or uh, bigger. And having them as smart objects, they will keep their uh, pixels and they will look uh, the same even if they are big or they are small. So at this moment, both of my layers are smart objects and uh, let, uh, let me move it uh, to the left. And now I press Ctrl and J to duplicate them. So I made a copy of both of them and uh, I'm going to right click and rasterize them. That means they are not smart objects anymore. So uh, I'm pressing Ctrl and I to merge them together. So now this is uh, just a normal layer. So uh, if you look on the right where I have my uh, layers, on the bottom right part, you will see that little icon. That means uh, that's uh, a smart object. And here we don't have it uh, because uh, I have rasterized the layer. So uh, now let me demonstrate to you what I said before. So now if I select all of them and I press Ctrl and T and I make them really, really small, something like that. All right. Uh, if we zoom in, of course, they will have uh, the same quality because they are really, really small. But now if I uh, repeat the process and I make them bigger again, uh, something like that, you will notice the difference in a second. So uh, look, the the one in the right that uh, it's a normal layer. Once you shrink it and then you make it bigger again, it will lose the the quality. And the other one, the other ones, uh, because they were smart objects, they kept their quality. So that that's one of the main factors uh, for, uh, for the smart objects. All right, let me delete this one and. Uh, 
another important thing about uh, the smart objects is that uh, if you apply let's say any filter let's grab a filter from a filter gallery uh, it's just a random demonstration so now if I uh, use this uh, cut out uh, filter let's hit ok you'll see that uh, we have that filter applied and now uh, if you want to modify you just uh, modify that filter just double click on the filter on the smart filters on the right and it will uh, take you to the filter properties so you can modify anything here uh, and uh, it will apply after you hit the ok button so that's really important because otherwise if your uh, layer uh, it's not a smart object and yet you apply this filter you cannot modify anything and later on if you change your mind you can right click and uh, you can uh, delete the smart filter and your layer is back to the original state let's move on with matching colors for example we have uh, this background that it's uh, more purple and orange and we have uh, this, uh, this Deadpool from the first example our Deadpool uh, doesn't match that well with the background that because it has uh, different uh, colors and uh, different color tones from our background so uh, let's uh, try a really simple way in matching the colors first of all I'm going to add uh, hue and saturation and I'm going to decrease the saturation to have everything black and white so if you look at the image you'll see that our uh, blacks and uh, whites and grays of course from our Deadpool are really different than the ones from the background that means we have to match his uh, blacks uh, with the background in order to do that let's add a brightness and contrast and I'm going to hold alt and click between the layers to add this adjustment layer to affect only our Deadpool character and then I'm going to slowly decrease our brightness to see if uh, we can match uh, those uh, black levels to the background I think we can go to the maximum and we have almost the same uh, blacks as the background and of course we can increase the contrast a bit more to have almost the same blacks as our uh, background so now if we uncheck the hue and saturation uh, our blacks uh, levels look uh, really well and now we can try to move on with the color matching and then one of uh, the methods is using selective color the same hold alt and click between the layers and now everything that uh, we uh, do will affect only the deadpool this is what you can do with the selective color and uh, one really important tip is to use uh, instead of normal to use color it will blend better the colors than the normal because uh, normal it affects the whole image and the color affects only the colors from that uh, image of course it needs uh, highlights shadows and uh, that's uh, another uh, tutorial not uh, this one shadows and highlights so we have this image uh, with this uh, house and um, if you look in the distance you'll see that uh, those mountains or whatever they are uh, they're not uh, really that visible and uh, we can do something about it so uh, first of all let's uh, duplicate the layer Ctrl J and I don't know if you used this uh, feature or not but it's really nice and uh, it will help us a lot so go to image and then adjustments and select shadows and highlights so we have uh, those uh, shadows and highlights and now uh, we are going to play with the highlights so if you want to have more details from the highlights areas you need to play with the highlights so now if we increase the, uh, the amount and the radius and of course the tone you'll see that we have a lot of details in the background uh, from those mountains now they are more visible than uh, before so, so if we uncheck the preview you'll see how it was before and now uh, if we change those values uh, our uh, background it's more visible our mountains are more visible so if you hit ok uh, you have uh, those uh, settings applied so that's why it's important to work with the smart objects because now if I want to modify anything I just double click and I have my settings ready here all right and then let's uncheck it hide it and I'm going to uh, duplicate it again Ctrl J 
And now we are going again to uh, image adjustments and here select shadows and highlights. And now I want to have some uh, details from our shadows. So if you look at the house, it doesn't have uh, that mo many details because it's all uh, almost black. But now if I'm dragging the amount of uh, shadow tones and radius, you'll see that uh, we get a lot more details from the house uh, and you can keep uh, any portion that you want uh, with a mask after you are finished. So now if I hit OK, you'll see that our house uh, details are more visible and uh, of course with the other one we can mix them together by adding a mask. So if I want to keep the sky, I'm uh, going to the first one with the mountain, I am adding a mask. So uh, then I'm uh, with a black color, I'm just painting underneath and I'm uh, keeping only the mountain part that's uh, visible now. And then, of course, underneath it is the layer that we just modify with the shadows. Uh, if you want to keep it like that, it's okay. If not, add another mask on the shadows one and just uh, paint on the grass to have it like uh, it was uh, in the beginning, like, like the original one. And of course, you can do that with the one from the top of the house. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's see the differences. This was uh, before and this is after we added those shadows and highlights. So you can extract a lot of details from the photos that you have uh, that don't have that many details if you go to image adjustments and then select shadows and highlights. All right, let's move on to the last one, uh, which is uh, content aware scale. For example, we have this photo or with uh, those sweet cases and uh, we want to have the left side go until it reaches our document size. So go on the left side and select an area, which is uh, this one. All right, now I can uh, right click and uh, uh, check layer via copy. All right, so now we have this portion from our layer copied and I'm going to uh, press Ctrl and J to uh, have a copy of it. Now, if you want to uh, press Ctrl T and hold Shift and drag the left side to the left, it will do uh, this thing. It will uh, drag uh, the left side and it will make it uh, as big as, as our document. All right, so this is uh, one way. And the other way, let's hide it, it's to go again to the copy, this one. And instead of uh, pressing Ctrl T, I'm going to edit and then content aware scale. And now I'm holding shift and I'm dragging the same to the left. All right, let's see the differences now. So we did almost the same thing, but the result uh, I think is different. So this is the first one that we did without using content aware. And this is by using content aware. I know the differences are not that visible, but they are really important because using content aware scale, it will keep a lot of details and it will not distort the parts that you are going to uh, scale. So for example, this one for me, uh, it's a no go because it uh, shrink it and it lost a lot of details. And this one, for example, looks uh, really, really good. All right. So this is the first example. And the second example is uh, with uh, this one. So now uh, I want to have this picture covering uh, my entire document. So I'm going to the top. I'm going to select uh, this portion of uh, the image, right click and layer via copy. Then I'm going to edit content aware scale. I'm holding shift and I'm dragging uh, the top part to the top. Hit enter. And then I'm going again to the same uh, image and I'm going to copy this part, all right, something like that, right click and layer via copy. And then I'm going again to edit and enter aware scale and I'm holding shift and I'm dragging uh, to the bottom. All right, so uh, this is uh, how I use content aware scale, a really important feature from Photoshop. I don't know if you use it, but it's really important. So that was the tutorial for today. I hope that you learn new and interesting tips for your photo manipulations. If you want to learn other things for the next time, just write me a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed it uh, until now, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and see you next time.